reason I bought the this TR4A is because my previous car was also a Triumph, the TR3, right? Which I bought new in 1957. And I bought that because my cousin, uh, who lives in Scotland or did live in Scotland, had also got, had a, he had a TR2, uh, which quite impressed me. And although I, at that time, I was what you might call my daily use car was a Ford console, uh, I thought, well, you know, it's convenient, convenient to have two cars sometimes, so and uh, let's get this TR3, which I did, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a tricky little car sometimes, but it uh, gave good service, and so when the TR4A came along, I thought, well, let's give that a go. So, so far as appearance is concerned, I, I've never been overly fussed about what a car looks like. It's what it does. And does it do it well that counts for me? Okay, I'd never buy anything that's absolutely ugly. But, uh, as I say, the probably the main reason I bought it was A, that I'd been pleased with the uh, TR3, and uh, B, I liked a car that was a bit different and gave reasonable performance. And I thought, well, why not? That's all. Uh, there was a Triumph dealer in Swinton at that time, Quantock Motors, and uh, that was the oldest place to go. You know, that was how you bought a car in those days. You went to the agent who had the agency for that particular make, and they were the standard standard motor car agency for Swindon. Of course, Triumph then were part of standards. Well, as I remember, I just went along and said, I think I'd like one. Um, they didn't have a demonstrator in those days, they were a bit thin on the ground. So, um, I bought it on spec, as you might say, uh, but I, yes, I went through the colours with them and said this is what I like. I had to go to Swinton to collect it, and because after all I was trading in the old car, so that made sense. Um, <clears throat> delivery was slightly delayed because it was delivered to the agents with several defects, including an overdrive that didn't work, which was fairly typical of the British motor industry in those days. <laughs> Uh, so um, I got it slightly, I think a week or two later than I'd actually hoped to get it, but in the end I did get it. It was quite different from the TR3, I thought, uh, although at this distance in time I really can't give you any sort of details or reasons for saying that, but it was different, I remember, and on balance I would say that uh, didn't handle as well as the TR3 in my opinion. This is partly due to the fact that I would modified the TR3 with Coney shock absorbers which vastly improved it. Uh, whereas every, I think most people who know anything about Triumphs know that the uh, suspension of the TR4A was not its strongest point. Well, uh, yes, I use it mainly for going to work. Um, and sometimes we went away in it, though of course when we had the children with us we had to use the other car. Uh, I, had, I had it, owned it for 11 years. I sold it in 1976 when R2 um, became of age to learn to drive and obviously that was not a suitable car for them to learn in. So in place of the TR I'm afraid we got a 2CV which was Greatly loved and much fun, occasionally exasperating, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we still have fond memories of it. Yes. Well, the overdrive after that initial business uh, never gave me any trouble when I had the car, that always worked perfectly. There were a number of minor snags, and I was plagued with water leaks throughout the ownership of the car, I never did get that sorted. Um, one of the rear shock absorbers became disconnected quite early in its life, which uh, on a bumpy road gave you a most interesting experience to say the least. Um, there were various other minor problems like oil leaks from the final drive, um, noisy, uh, rather noisy gearbox, not noisy in the sense the gears made a noise, but something to do with the linkage to the gear shift made a, a most unpleasant noise sometimes during acceleration. That was later fixed, they don't quite know how. Uh, having to replace a soft top every few years was a minor irritation and expense. 
plus the fact we got a knife through it once, which uh, you know was always a problem if you parked in the wrong place. Uh, the engine never gave me any trouble at all. Uh, the exhaust system was highly expendable, it barely lasted two years. Um, towards the end of my time with it, um, a certain amount of body rust, particularly at the back end of the car, became a problem. Uh, I think the seat around the boot lid had to be replaced. Oh, and another funny thing, uh, quite early in the car's life, there was a peculiarity. I noticed it um, <coughs> seemed to turn much more readily in one direction direction than the other and uh, when checking the tyres one day I found it was due to the fact that one of the back tyres was of the incorrect size. It was a smaller cross section than it should have been and um, they did left the factory like that. So I, I wrote to uh, the chairman, I think it was Sir Donald Stokes at that time, and got a very apologetic letter back plus of course another free tyre. Uh, so about the same time as that, I noticed something else that on a bumpy road, the, the back end seemed to be much softer on one side of the car than the other. And I eventually found out it was due to the fact that one of the wheels, all the spokes were loose at the um, hub end. So you could actually get hold of the car, of uh, the wheel, when it was on the car and do that. And you could see the spokes moving in and out of the hub. Well, you know, so that wheel had to go away and be rebuilt, which meant I had to buy another wheel to cover the spare. And then gradually in turn, all the wheels went back to be rebuilt because they were showing signs of the same problem. This was when, unfortunately, it was when I had a guarantee by then. But I had no more trouble after that with those wheels, apart from corrosion, of course. It never let me down, <laughs> apart from that one episode of the V-Shop was all yeah. linking. Well, I, you know, I, I was quite fond of it, put it that way, and, um, you know, you liked it too, didn't you? Oh, yes. Because I, I had a brake servo fitted to help uh, find it easier to drive, because it's quite a hard push on the brake pedal. Uh, nostalgic, um, you know, delighted to see it's in good hands and look, looks absolutely super condition. Um, it's just great, that's all. What else can I say? <laughs>